Hey, bienvenidos a Vox Terra. Good to have you back again. So today, I'm going to share with you what should just be screaming headline news. But isn't, I believe due to the power and influence of the fossil fuel petrochemical industries. First, from CBS News. Atlantic Ocean circulation is the weakest in at least 1,600 years. By Jeff Beradelli. February 2021, but the article I'm going to cite from the most is from a show called Living on Earth, an interview with a professor, Ramstorff, also in 2021, this one in March. But warnings, warnings that the ocean circulations are slowing or could slow due to fossil fuel driven climate change, global warming, is nothing new. It should have been screaming headlines not only today, but decades ago. I found for you an article which I'll post beneath the show from the Union of Concerned Scientists going back to 2004 citing a Pentagon study warning that a heating planet could shut off the very ocean circulations that moderate the globe's temperatures and climate. But it goes back farther. I remember first hearing about this problem of the Gulf Stream and these ocean currents shutting down going back to 1997. So I found an article for you, which I'll also post, from Columbia University. Well, how does it work? How does it work, these ocean currents? Here's how it works. You can think of the Earth's ocean and air currents, atmospheric currents, like a giant conveyor belt. From the polar regions, you know, air, air and ocean currents circulating to the polar regions and back down to the warmer tropical areas, or back up, rising and sinking. Now, in the case of the Gulf Stream, which gets most of the attention, according to Professor Ramstorff, the Gulf Stream is part of a bigger system of ocean circulation. Now, sometimes I hear this larger ocean circulation referred to as thermohaline, but in this article, he's talking about something called the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC, and sometimes the German professor shows up. Professor Ramstorff published a study in Nature Geo about the AMOC circulation slowing down. So the way this Atlantic circulation in the Gulf Stream operates is like this. Warmer surface waters flow north along the Atlantic from the southern, from the southern ocean across the equator. Up to the far north in the high latitudes. Then these waters cool, then sink. The colder water and salty water are higher in density, and they sink, where they return south as cold, deep currents. And the process repeats. Now how is this thing getting messed up? Here's how it's getting messed up. Those currents are now the weakest. The weakest! They have been in more than a thousand years. According to Ramstorff, it slowed down 15% since the 1950s. 15% since the 1950s. Like I've taught you in other shows, the poles have heated more than the rest of the planet in a process called amplification or feedback. So we're losing that temperature difference that keeps things circulating. That's one. But two, the northern surface waters or the surface waters in general on the Earth are hotter now therefore less dense, and they don't sink like they used to. Now, in addition to that heat messing up the circulation, the heating planet, as I've taught you before, is also is enhanced, what they call enhanced, the water cycle. Enhanced the water cycle, meaning this hotter atmosphere, it holds more moisture. These hotter oceans are giving up more, it retains it, and we get more intense rainfalls now. So there is more rainfall more fresh water entering those those northern areas the water there is the surface waters are less salty two you probably heard the greenland ice sheets are melting also adding more fresh water well that fresh water is less dense and it doesn't sink like it used to so again the circulation the ocean circulation is getting messed up slowing down well, what are the consequences? What are the consequences, huh? Eh? This isn't just like, oh, the ocean currents are slowing down. Think about the ocean as stagnating. Think about stagnant water. 
So in the case of the ocean, as well as the atmospheric currents, these moderate the Earth's temperatures, allow for predictable rainfall patterns and weather patterns that have allowed for agriculture, advanced civilization, indeed, advanced life, to prosper and flourish on the Earth. That's one. Temperature and climate moderation. Two, there is tangibly a cold blob now in the North Atlantic. Now you might think, cold blob, well it's good to cool things down a little. Au contraire! That cold blob, interestingly, according to Ramstorff, is the only place on Earth that has actually cooled in the past hundred years, or the main place. And contrarily to kind of cooling down that area, it's actually shifted the Earth's atmosphere currents to funnel warm air from the south into Europe during the summer, resulting in some of these drastic summer heat waves. A third thing, more powerful cyclones or tropical storms. Now that hot water is really lingering and accumulating in the tropics, heat fuels cyclones and storms. Really interesting and highlighting the fact we just live on a blue marble, as they used to say, is the Earth's Cori what they call the Earth's Coriolis effect. The rotating of the Earth actually pushes the ocean waters to the right of that Gulf Stream. And what happens is that as that Gulf Stream is weakening, that will result in enhanced sea level rise to the left, because that Gulf Stream apparently, sort of according to Ramstorff, pins those waters in place a bit. So we'll have more enhanced sea level rise on the, on the American coastline. But this doesn't just affect life on the surface of the Earth. Also, these currents, this ocean circulation, this thermohaline circulation, is a giant nutrient conveyor belt. Again, according to Ramstorff, it's made the Atlantic a very productive fishery. That's in jeopardy. In fact, there's very little study done really knowing how the Atlantic Ocean, or the oceans in general, are being damaged and harmed and radically changed by climate change. The topic of feedback, meaning as we, through our excessive burning of fossil fuels, heat the Earth, the Earth then takes, begins heating itself. So in the case of the hotter ocean, according to some research I did for you at NASA, the hotter ocean reduces the ocean's ability to absorb carbon dioxide, a prime heat trap in gas which dissolves in water. And remember, as we've added more and more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere through the burning of fossil fuels, the oceans have been acidifying, and no climate denier really denies that. But with these stagnant waters, the ocean stratifies more now, meaning that water stays in its layers, so less of the carbon dioxide is now sinking to the depths. Another factor, according to NASA, is the slow dying of this nutrient belt will support less phytoplankton, Phytoplankton provides photosynthesis, which converts the carbon dioxide into oxygen, and there's less of that happening, or will be less of that happening. Now, I would assume we should always use our imaginations a bit. I would assume also that that would mean less oxygen to carbon dioxide content in the atmosphere in general, as well as the oceans. Now, again, this show we started off with the concept of abrupt climate change, or, or tipping points, so that means that what, what Professor Ramstorff is talking about with the tipping points and, and what that Pentagon study was talking about with abrupt climate change is, is when do things heat up enough where a vital system just shuts down? And again, these are giant unknowns being unnecessarily, in my opinion, played around with. Well, according to Professor Ramstorff, climate models show that by the year 2100, there'll be a 34 to 45 percent decrease in the ocean circulation. And what he says is that looks dangerously close to what many climate scientists consider a tipping point where the ocean circulation just won't work any longer. As opposed to a gradual slowing down and a more gradual climate changing and heating. And it's that tipping point where you might have seen in the movie that was released some time ago, the day after I think it was called, about North America being, you know, Europe being tossed into a deep freeze. And that was one of the concerns of the Pentagon study. So if it was shut down so dramatically, that would happen. But with the Earth heating up overall, it's probably just more climate disruption than those, than those areas actually becoming frozen completely. Well, what to do? What to do? Professor Ramstorff said, we, to paraphrase him, we should have stayed in Paris.
basically the Paris Agreement, basically you've got to cut drastically back on the amount of greenhouse gases our civilization is, in my opinion, largely unnecessarily adding to the atmosphere. He said we should cut global emissions in half, in half, within the next 10 years to avoid that possibility of hitting an actual tipping point as opposed to what we're experiencing now, which is a gradual decline of our stable climate. Well, hey, I hope you found this video really helpful. And if you did, please subscribe to my channel. Please click that notification bell. Please like, please comment. Constructive criticism, hey, more than welcome. But keep it sincere. Because remember, this is a volunteer effort. And I hope it's not always a volunteer effort, so please share my videos with others so that we can get the message out. And until next time, peace be with you.